Welcome to the GWO Blade Repair webinar. Um, we're going to go spend anywhere from 30 to uh, 60 minutes together. Um, I would like to say for it to run smoothly, all questions that you may have along the way, please put those into chat. And then at the end of the presentation, I'll open up the chat and address the questions that have been has been brought forward. So it's not because we want to ignore anything that's relevant, it's just because a lot of people speaking at the same time uh, can be an issue with the online um, session here. So the agenda for today is a brief introduction, then a motivation for uh, the blade repair standards as such, the objective of it. We're going to have a, a quick look at the target group the scope and uh, some specific, a bit more, uh, let's call it technical uh, things, both when it comes to how the training is set up, but also uh, with what it addresses regarding the blade. And then we're gonna look at the content, next step, and then questions. Uh, first off, um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jacob. Um, I'm the head of standards development in uh, GWO. Um, have a background from the armed forces, uh, last as an officer in the Air Force, also have an engineering background. Um, been a training manager in Siemens and uh, head of training at MHI Vestas, an offshore company. Um, my role in this working group has been to facilitate it or be a co-project manager, if you if you can call it that, uh, together with uh, Jakob Kressensen, who's also on the call. And uh, Jakob, could you introduce, introduce yourself briefly, just really fast? Yeah, I'm uh, head of uh, training development for uh, blade training in uh, Siemens Gamesa. And I uh, had the fortune to work together with uh, Jakob from DWO. Uh, last uh, plus 12 months to develop this uh, standard um, and also attended in uh, Bilbao. Hope I met some of you there um, and I'm looking forward to this session. Cool. Thank you. Brilliant. And we also have on the call, we have Alex with us. Alex, could you put a few words on yourself? Maybe. It's all quiet. If not, I'll do it. Uh, I'm sure that he'll surface later. Uh, Alex Burger uh, works for GW as well. He's been involved with the blade training uh, and uh, has a, a past working with blade training uh, in investors. So the members of the uh, the working group has come from MTI Investors, Siemens Gamesa, LM Wind Power, Merce Training, and Vestas. So you could say. Uh, and of course, in this case, LM Wind Power is let's call it the uh, the, the proxy for uh, for GE as they provide blades for them. So a lot of the blades around the world has been represented in this group. I won't spend more time on the, on the group as such, other than just let you guys know they did do real they did really well, and uh, it was a, an absolute joy to work with them. So. The motivation for uh, for making uh, a blade repair standard um, are many, uh, and, and I just kind of put up a few bullets. Um, behind those bullets, you could say that there's no doubt that wind turbine blades are subjected to I mean, several degrade, degradation mechanisms. It could be a bird strike, lightning strike, leading edge corrosion, trailing edge damage, material fatigue and surface erosion from rain, hail, ice, or even insects. Um, but even without uh, actual damage on the wind turbine blade, I mean, the surface roughness caused by particle accretion and minor pitting can reduce the aerodynamic efficiency of the blades and thereby the turbine's productivity. Um, blade maintenance is becoming a major issue for the wind industry, there's no doubt. Considering the number of composite wind turbine blades, um, which are now in service on, all around the world, um, and this of course covers both on and offshore, um, there's a continuously increasing number of wind turbine blades coming out of warranty. And that also requires a, an industry-wide 
consistent approach to blade repair. Um, I mean, and the foundation for this should be a consistent, robust, and also reliable blade repair training course. And at the same time, there's a need for blade technicians to have an understanding and awareness of the associated health and safety issues when, uh, when dealing with the blade repairs and inspection, of course. Uh, occupational diseases is a big issue. I mean, you know, life altering experiences for some, I mean, it could be life ending illness for others. Um, Blade repair will typically expose these technicians to several substance hazards to their health. Hazardous substance in the, in the workplace comes from, come in various forms. For example, it could be dust, vapors, fumes, liquids. And these can be found in different scenarios. And could happen during painting or could be particles from grinding and fumes from uh, from painting again and of course there's also the whole issue with vibrating tools uh, causes uh, and there's I forget there's a very uh, distinctive uh, abbreviation for this but it's basically about hand arm vibration um, as also of course there's dealing with noise and hearing loss from it so that's kind of the motivation behind it um, if you look at the objective of the training standard, and this becomes a bit more, let's say, uh, specific to the training. Um, we want to ensure that the technicians are able to identify the risks that they're facing, right? Because step number one is to identify, and then you can, you, then you can mitigate the hazard and the risk, right? Um, because you want to make them a, a, as low as reasonable or practical reasonable. You can't take everything out. It's still chemicals. It's still a dangerous task to conduct, to work with blades. Um, we also wanted to ensure the, that there's a consistent approach. Um, one of the things that is, is very high on the member wish list in GWO is that they get the same quality every time. And having a training standard um, in a regimented setup is is a help in that way. Um, so after all is said and done, the DWO blade repair course, uh, the delegates should be able to, after the course, uh, to perform a document blade inspection and to repair work, do repair work in accordance with uh, the work instruction. And here comes a bit of a, the interesting area, and I'm sure this is um, for some who are very much into the detail here, they will have focus on this. So the trailing edge repair can be done uh, up to 1.5 meters, the leading edge repair up to 1.5 meters, and the laminate repairs can be conducted down to the core material. So the core material is an interesting element because in some blades, the core material comes very fast uh, under very few layers. In others, it's way down into the blade. So it's a bit different, but this is, again, it's, a, it's an industry-wide training, right? And then work on core material replacement up to uh, 200 square centimeters. And surface repair to uh, paint and gel coat. So that's kind of, this is what we want the delegate to be able to do once the course is complete. The target group, uh, and this is taken from, whenever we make a, a training standard, we start with something we call a, a terms of reference, or we could just call it a tour, which is, in essence is a scoping document. And, and the text here is, is derived directly from that. Um, you can say that the overall goal uh, is is that the blade repair training uh, should be part of the, the training profile for all technicians working uh, for GWO members, which is, I mean, 16, 17 uh, companies now and and the, the main largest ones in the world, right? And uh, we also want to ensure transparency, global alignment, so everybody knows what they're getting. Uh, and and that kind of goes to what we did earlier. And we want to keep the technicians safe. So all technicians working for GWO member and everybody who's related to blade repair are the target group for this. So if you look at the scope and and, and apologies to everyone for, uh, for a lot of bullets here, 
but when we create a training standard, we kind of sit down and say, well, what are we covering? And also, what, what are we not covering? Um, but it is like a checklist for things we, we need to to uh, ensure that we've dealt with during the uh, development process. So we need to identify the known and suspected hazardous substance, substances involved in plate repair. Also, of course, the health risks related to those. And uh, generic and commonly recognized uh, inspection and repair principles and techniques, because as it is, a training that goes across the different brands, we wanted to cover everything. And th this is quite interesting because some companies only work with one, two component uh, material, the others, it varies, etc. So um, it was quite a lot of work to go through this, but we had good, good membership in the group. And the scope was also to reduce exposure to the acceptable levels. And here we're talking about dust and fumes, etc. And we also need to look at other work-related health issues. And again, to, to, to reduce the exposure to an acceptable level. Method statements, procedures, etc., for plate repairs. Uh, and risk assessment. Those risk assessments are shared by the working group members. And in some cases, it goes directly to a procedure. In other cases, it's more of a, let's say, when you deal with this area, be mindful of. Um, and also, we share... Uh, existing material and lessons learned from incidents uh, as well as health issues and surveillance monitoring of course and different scenarios i'll come back to how the whole training is set up but that's actually based on different scenarios as well so there's always a caveat right and um, in this case uh, the gw and i'm going to read this word by word because it's important the GWO Blade Repair Training course is intended as an entry-level course, and therefore the delegate will not be expected to perform repairs in major structural elements of blades like spars, spar caps, and carbon fiber. I'm sure this will lead to a few questions. We'll take that at the very end. Yes? So, specifics. We always like specifics when we deal with a bit more technical-minded aspects, right? First, if you look at the training, uh, at DWO, we, we work according to a principle that what you do with your hands and in collaboration with others is what you remember. We deal with a, a learning retention rate and a principle called transfer when learning. And in essence, you could say as soon as it's collaborative, as soon as it happens in a workshop or uh, by talking together, we're happy. It, if it happens in a classroom theory, slide by slide, we're not so happy because research shows that two months gone, and then you remember anywhere from 10 to 20% of what you sat down on a chair and listened to. But you are between 50 and 85-ish uh, if you did it in the workshop. So when we made this training, it's a 10-day training. Uh, we really focused on moving as much theory as possible into the practical areas um, while still ensuring that people got the safety information that they needed before actually dealing with hazardous items. So 560 minutes is theory, 3,640 or 86% is practical. So it's a very practical, um, course we of course have an instructor ratio on it as with everything else as 1 to 12 in theory and 1 to 6 in practical and uh, for those of you and I think that was most I recognize quite a few names that deals with um, with the whole uh, GWO setup they know that uh, the 1 to 6 practical is quite common as soon as there are hazards and risks involved because we want the instructor to be capable of uh, ensuring the safety and learning of the delegates. Um, the content, um, general safety, personal protection equipment, general knowledge, craftsmanship. I'll get back to that, what that actually means. And uh, 
then there are some annexes, of course, of work instruction, an example of what that could be, and mode schematic and tests. So, and here in the content, due to uh, quite simply not having enough space on the slide, I left out the PPE, uh, but PPE is a pivotal item in the blade repair training. One of the experiences we had with um, the pilot trainings was that there's a tendency to uh, one up the, the PP. I mean, uh, people went into full body suits, etc. I think it's important to mention that look at the work instruction, use the PPE in the work instruction every time, because that is what the delegates will do when they get uh, onto site, anyways. So I, that's not in here, but the other three elements is. So, first off, uh, we deal with um, general safety. What is a work instruction, risk assessment, safety data sheets, securing an area, etc. A lot of focus on contamination. Um, contamination and waste segregation are some of the topics that, uh, when you do this course around the world, will we'll, will vary quite a bit because um, the rules and regulations in, for instance, the UK and Denmark are quite different when it comes to uh, waste segregation or uh, how you deal with contamination. Um, so these topics are important for the instructor to be really crisp on. What goes and does not go in the country that I'm in or where the delegates that I'm having are from. We're also dealing with ergonomics and where briefly touching upon lockout tagout, because why are as the blade technicians are not supposed to conduct this, they need to be aware of how it works and that it should be done before they start working and who they should talk to about it. Then we have general knowledge, because before we put them into those very, very many practical minutes, they still need to know about chemical safety, how the blade is constructed, the materials that they're dealing with, the tools and equipment, so that's kind of covered in that. And um, then we have the whole practical area. The practical area is very interesting as, as it's kind of where it happens. Um, uh, some of the people who were involved with uh, making this course really uh, highlighted the fact that grinding and sanding, that's where it all, all is. If you can't grind and sand, it doesn't matter then you're gonna break blades and you're basically gonna ruin more than you fix. There's a lot of focus on, on, on hand skills and there's a lot of minutes in the workshop for this. Of course, there's the lamination, etc., and all these things uh, and the repairs inspection are important. Different techniques when working with leading edge and trailing edge um, that are key, but it's still down to grinding and sanding and understanding these things. That's really, really important. Um, most of these exercises um, happen in the workshop uh, with PPE on. So it's really important that uh, the training is conducted with full focus from the instructor. And um, it's also important that when you make a facility for this type of training that you understand how fumes and dust work uh, quite a few have approached us and said, well, we have this spot on paint facility. Can we use that? And I'm, I'm like, sure. We, of course, put in tolerances in the training standard, uh, what you can have in the air, et cetera, but be mindful of dust goes down. So having suction at floor level is, is pivotal to, to conducting this training. Um, so there's a, I would say it's harder to do this from scratch if you don't have an instructor on board who understands blade work. I would recommend finding finding such a person and uh, and go from there. Yes? So, the next step, steps in, the, in a second, I'll first deal with the uh, questions that are in the chat. Um, but when that's done, I would urge all of you to get ready, get certified, and uh, help create a safer work environment for the blade technicians. Uh, the blade technician uh, area is still in, in many companies and many regions of the world, not very um, controlled. And this goes for both the work being conducted, but also for the safety 
of the uh, of the guys out there. So so I would really we have a cool product here. I I would um, recommend that you put a lot of effort into uh, getting this uh, up and running. Questions, and I'll get to those in a second. But I just want to show this slide. If you want to have questions that just relates to you or you don't want to do publicly, emails, ad email addresses are available in front of you right now. It's mine and it's Alex's. Uh, and feel free to reach out.